In order to better control the mesh and get the desired result, we have updated some representation controls in HyperMesh 2024. First, we added a new option to set the thickness precision in the common mid-surface representation control. In previous version, thickness always had two decimals, which could be a problem for models in meta. Now, you can either choose to set a specific number of decimals with the custom mode, or let HyperMesh define a thickness value with at least two significant figures with the automatic mode. This thickness precision option has also been added to the min mesh representation control. And you can now control this precision for both output types, the nodal thickness or thickness on properties. Regarding properties, you can now also define the thickness interval method in order to control the number of thickness group or thickness properties. Let me show you that. As you can see, this model is quite simple. It is made of a single port representing a solid geometry with multiple thicknesses. Let's first create a new representation control in order to get a min mesh. So let's create a min mesh representation control. Let's call it min mesh and let's ask for a 0.2 millimeter element size and let's leave all of this option by default let's execute this representation control let's click on the port right click representation create and let's execute the min mesh representation once the batch mesh successfully completed let's load the results let's have a look on the mesh The min mesh has been created and automatically five properties assigned to the mesh. The thickness value is about 0.2, 0.15 and sometime with four digits. Let's modify that. Let's go back to the ports. Let's reload the representation CAD and let's modify the control in order to better control the thickness value. Let's say I would like to change the automatic thickness interval range method to the fixed value, and I would like to have a fixed interval of 0.01. And let's re-execute the batch measure. Let's have a look on the new results. So the mesh is the same, and let's have a look on the properties. Now all the properties have one or two digits with a range interval of 0.01. Another great improvement is related to the number of layers for the exact thin solid representation control. The definition of certain number of exa layers was already available in previous version. But now you can define a minimum number of layers. This way you will get the defined number of layers in the smallest port and more layers based on the element size on the bigger ones. Let me quickly show you that. There are three ports with different thicknesses, one millimeter for this one, three millimeters, and the bigger one with five millimeter thickness on the left side. Let's have a look on the representation control manager and the Exacin solid representation as the minimum number of layers set to three. Let's have a look on the results. Let's select the ports and let's load the existing representation that has been already created. Here we go. Load. So for the two first solid on the right side, one millimeter and three millimeters, we have three elements in the thickness, three layers of X element. But for the bigger one with five millimeter thickness, there are five layers based on the element size and not only three. Eventually, for the customization fans, there is now in HyperMesh 2024 a completely new control type named Custom. As usual, you can specify your own meshing configuration through the param and criteria file. And now you can also provide a customization script that will be executed during the meshing process. I have created the following customization file, which is a TCL script called custom.tcl, and it contains three proc, pre-geom, pre-mesh, and post-mesh. 
The last one contained the two following lines in order to save the HM file after uh, the script. Okay, let's try to use this one in the new custom control. Let's create a new control called custom. Here we go. Let's select the custom file that will be used, this one. And let's define there the name of the procedure defined in the script. Pregion, premesh, and postmesh. And here we go. My custom representation is ready to be executed. Let's select the port and let's ask to execute the representation called custom. So as I didn't specify any param or config file, no mesh will be created. But what is important is from the result directory where the batch measure is executed. Let's have a look. As you can see, the batch measure will create some log file. And we could see that in the console.txt file, we've got some log, some information. And according to the script, where I ask to put some string, how easy it is, we could retrieve this return there on the console.txt file, how easy it is. And if you open the runview log file, you can check that the custom file is correctly used as pregium, premesh, and postmesh script for customization purpose. And as for the top one feature from the HyperMesh 2024 release, we have not the free body groups and trace plot enhanced workflow, which you have already seen. We have the possibility of animating results. How can we do that? First thing you need, and the only thing, actually, you need two, two things, right? You need the results, of course, and then a the form plot. Once you do that, I'll call this one 10 times the formation with a uniform scale of 10 times the displacements. Hit plot. And then you can review the animation of your simulation. I have bouncy mode option enabled. So if you need to change that, go ahead to the animation settings. You can choose to bounce, to loop. So loop will go to the end and then start. Back at the start, while bounce will go back and forth. You can change the speed of animation with the slider bar. Let's make that faster. Or is lower. You just drag the other way. And the cool thing is that apart from the animation, we can also now control the contour plot style via the legend hyperlinks. So I created a contour. It says displacement, but you can create another one or even change from the legend. So if you click on the legend, the result request. I have everything that's available. So if I wanted to change from displacement for, I'm looking for 2D stresses, element stresses, right here, then auto update. And you can see, of course, animate everything. So apart from linear static analysis, we can also animate model results. I'll make this one model maximized. And the only thing you need to do is to change the animation type. So I had interpolation before. Now I have modal mode, which will animate based on your normal modes results. And of course, you still need a deformation plot applied. I have 10 right now. And if I animate that, if I change to another one, such as from one, Make that to 12. And also, besides linear static and model, we can also 
animate transient results or nonlinear static results, although explicit results are not yet available. Then what we need to do is change from either linear or modal to transient mode. I have a contour applied right here, contact normal. Let's review that. So this is bouncing. We change to loop. Make that a little bit slower. And change subcase as well. So I have subcase two ring down, make that current and change to bounce. You can see that the contour being updated live based on the time step. All right, so this concludes the HyperMesh 2024 top 10 features. Thank you. As for 2023.1, the top one feature for 2024 is Python. As we continue to bring Python capabilities inside HyperView HyperGraph, which we started in 23.1, and HyperMesh from version 2024. I won't detail all the new features. Uh, there is a dedicated video which I will point. Um, there's a, there should be a link in the video to, to redirect you to this presentation, uh, but just showing you a couple of information about Python. So, as I mentioned, uh, Python was introduced in 23.1 starting Hyperview and Hypergraph. So now let me do some basic manual operations, uh, opening a result, uh, contouring it with any value, and running the animation and why not creating a derived load case, type envelope, checking my three subcases, apply OK, and changing the subcases to uh, this derived load case, sorry. One of the improvements in 23.1 is about HWC. For those who are not familiar yet with the latest versions, we introduce a concept uh, in Hyperview similar to the command that is here in the Hypermesh, which is based on these HWC commands. So here you see uh, the different commands. It's HWC language, but the beauty of the thing is you can basically select all your commands here, control, um, sorry, with a shift, and you can right click, and you can either log to a TCL file or Python file or copy to Python. So let me go to Python, let me do new, yes, uh, and then let me go to Python Windows. There is just a prerequisite before running these commands, otherwise you will have some errors. Uh, you need a couple of um, modules to be imported, hw and in that case uh, hw.hv because I'm working with Hyperview. Uh, if you are working with Hypergraph, you will need hw.hg, and if you're working with Hypermesh, hw.hm. And now, oh, sorry, I need to go back to hwc, uh, copy to Python, and do Python Windows again. And here you are doing, um, again, everything from, um, from this command. So a pretty quick way to collect information uh, and to get a first code for your post-processing sessions. In the HyperMesh site, uh, we delivered from 24.1, um, uh, 24, sorry, we are um, delivering HyperMesh APIs commands with the HM module and HM.entity modules. We do not deliver yet a command that PY, which would be the equivalent of command.tcl, this will get later with 24.1. However, we started already to gather some uh, knowledge in order to help you start uh, preparing uh, Python code with HyperMesh, so you have example in the online app. We also created a dedicated playlist in the YouTube channel, which collects, uh, so if you go to um, 
Mm, sorry, scroll down a little bit too much. Modeling visualization. You have this Python automation, which contains the different existing uh, recordings regarding the Python capabilities, both in Hypergraph, Hyperview, and in Hypermesh. And also, we are trying to collect as much knowledge as possible in uh, to Altair community. So, especially if you go to forums and users group and you have any question, any general question about Python, feel free to use the Hyperwork script and customization in order to ask any questions. So, it could be either TCL or Python, we will answer the different questions. Uh, among this knowledge base, this community, there's a dedicated FAQ which we started, which I should, we should release soon, um, in order to answer the different questions that are not listed yet in the documentation and they will be exposed later in the communication, uh, into the documentation, sorry. And we are planning, obviously, to create and publish an e-learning in order for uh, our users to get onboarded with Python automation, uh, with Hypermesh Hyperview Hypergraph, which will come um, probably end of year, beginning of next year. Thanks for reviewing this uh, top 10. Uh, see you.